When I go through each process that goes into building a guitar, I feel that there is not one without the other. Every single part of that process is equally as important in ultimately why somebody is going to fall in love with a Gibson guitar. And so I look at it as every single one of our craftsmen are making their part in giving the gift of music to somebody that's going to pick up that Gibson guitar and fall in love with it and create new sounds and that I'm very proud of. After fret prep and or buffing, the material handlers will then get the guitars and match up the appropriate parts kit with that guitar and put them in racks which they then deliver to final assembly. Each guitar has a parts kit that has all the major components that are specific to that model. So when it makes it to that line, the lead person on the line will then take that hardware kit that's matched up with that model and then start the final assembly process. So I'm lead in final assembly, going on 15 years. Even after 15 years, it seems that every day is a new adventure. When you combine the different personalities of the people that create the guitar, along with the different personalities of each guitar, really, it makes for a very interesting process and day. It's, every day is an adventure. We have four final assembly lines that are all single piece flow. That means the guitar enters at the lead person. He will then do any pre-drilling for the tuner holes, the jack plate, the control covers. He'll then install the strap pins and then send it to the next person on the line. The next person on the line will then install the tuners and then he may install the control assembly. Then he sends it to the next person and then he may install the toggle switch and install the pickups. And then he sends it to the next person and then it makes it through all those successive steps until it makes it to the adjuster. The adjuster then gets the guitar, which is primarily built up except for the tailpiece, bridge, and strings. He will then string the guitar up, tune it, and then start the adjustment process. So once the guitar is tuned up, he'll have to adjust that neck because the tension of the string will affect that, and then file the nut to its appropriate height and shape it, and then he adjusts the pickup height, the bridge height, and the tailpiece height. He'll take a tailpiece that's pre-populated with strings. Not only does it make it faster for him, but more importantly, there's less of a chance of scratching the surface of the guitar by threading the strings in individually. So it's quicker and cleaner for assembly. Once he's done, he then sends it to the cleaner. The cleaner will then give it an inspection, a final polishing, and install truss rod covers and control covers. After the cleaner, then the guitar goes to the final inspector. Everything that I do in quality control, I uh, inspect the guitars, check them for playability. I look at the cosmetics. I play it all the way up the neck, make sure no, no buzzes, no none of that stuff. So I check the electronics, check the uh, string height, check the, you know, at the nut, and I check it at the 12th, make sure everything's good. Yeah, check all the hardware, all the push-pull pots, make sure they play, check the tone pots, check the volume, make sure there's no scratchiness. When I'm done inspecting a Gibson, I'll fill out the tag, you know, check off all the boxes, and then, you know, I'll sign it and date it. And for me, when I sign that, that's me telling the customer that I've done the best that I absolutely can do to make sure that guitar is perfect, close to perfect as we can get it. And that's real important to me because when somebody opens a case and they pull out their guitar, I want them to go, wow, you know? I want them to have the wow factor. The final inspector then has to give it its final playability test, and then he takes a photo of that guitar, prints out the photo, 
That photo is also kept as a digital copy, which we retain, and that digital copy is synced with the serial number of that guitar. He signs off the inspection ticket, fills in the date, the SKU, the serial number, and signs it, and puts that photo with the guitar, and then it goes to the packer. The packer then gets that guitar, matches that guitar up with the appropriate case or gig bag, installs any case candy that would go with that guitar, which in addition to the inspection tag and photo, would be the warranty packet, any adjustment tools and straps. That will accompany the guitar in the case or gig bag. That's put inside the carton, and then that's the end of the line. It goes into the warehouse. It may be the end of our story, but it's just the beginning of someone else's story. When I think about Gibson, I think about this amazing, rich, incredible history for 125 years, shaping sound across generations and genres of music, and at the same time, thinking about the future. I have a huge amount of respect for what they were doing back in the day, and we need to borrow from the learnings that Ted left us, that Orville started, and really lean into the future in a, in a pretty dramatic way while also preserving our heritage and paying tribute to our past. And so that to me is something that's very important that I keep in mind, I don't take it for granted. And that's what makes it an incredible privilege to be a leader of this brand. Growing up and listening to the music and daily knowing the impact that Gibson Guitar has had on the history of music is really quite humbling. And to be actually working here at Gibson and seeing the guitars that we make every day, I take a lot of pride in that. I've often talked about, you know, when you talk about the Gibson guitar and the essence of it, it's not just about the guitar itself, it's the journey that it goes on. And we talk about for 125 years, Gibson creating and inspiring and shaping and innovating and contributing to that share of sound. And I think when you look at the cumulative effect of the sound that gets created, the moments that matter to individuals, whether they were the players and the guitarists or the fans they were playing it to, if you put the cumulative effect of, of Gibson sound, you're in the billions and billions and billions of sound coming out of Gibson into the billions of fans. So I think what makes it special is clearly the build, the craftsmanship, the made in the USA, the wood, the tone, the way we bring it together and the pride that happens right here in, in our Gibson factories here in the USA but then you see what happens to it when it leaves here. It goes somewhere where it gets presented, someone sees it, they've aspired to that all their life, they get it, they start to play it, the sound they create is more personal to them, first of all, but then all of a sudden people hear that and the sound resonates out. And it's the complete circle of Gibson from a piece of wood and some electronics in an amazing environment that gets built and crafted here, right through to the craftsman who actually plays it out there live. I think that's what makes Gibson special.